Hello and welcome to lesson 12 of software design and development for higher computing science. Today we are going to convert floating point numbers to integers. There are many ways of doing this and I've got a program with an array of floating point numbers. So we're going to convert these to integers. Now there are four main ways of doing that in Python, four that I'm going to show you. I'll explain why you would use each one individually. And the unfortunate thing for us is that although the SQA specifies that you have to convert floating point numbers to integers, they don't say how you need to do that. And I've never seen an instance of them asking for this in an exam or a coursework. So we're kind of at the mercy of the SQA, just having to guess which version they'll ask us to use. Now, my assumption is that if they ever ask you to convert a floating point number to an integer, they will specify which method that you have to use or not specify the method, but they'll specify what they want the result to be, which will imply which method you have to use. So let's talk about the four methods. What we'll do is for every number, in this array of numbers, we'll just print the number, but we're going to convert them to integers, right? So 11.5, we're going to convert that in, to an integer in a number of ways. The easiest way, and one way that you've done already, is to use the int function. So this converts a number that you put in here into an integer. So let's put the num. So for each num in the numbers array, we're going to convert it to an integer and print it. So if I run this, we'll see what happens. Now, what has happened? 11.5 became 11. 12.5 became 12, negative 6.5 became 6, negative 6, and negative 7.5 became negative 7. This does what's called truncating. It truncates the number by basically removing everything after the decimal point, and removes the decimal point, converts it to an integer. So that's all that does. It's easy to understand, it's pretty straightforward, not confusing at all, and you've used it before. Pretty good, eh? Now the second method uses the round function. Now this is going to give us slightly different results. And if you've studied maths, you'll probably have the experience of whenever a number ends in 0.5, round it up. Well, you may notice that Python doesn't do that. Not always. Look at this. 11.5 did round up, but 12.5 rounded down. Negative 6.5 did round up. It got closer to a positive number. But negative 7.5 was rounded down to a more negative number. Now, why is it doing this? Well, Python uses a more statistically fair method of rounding. It doesn't always round up when it's 0.5. Now, if you do round up when it's 0.5 every single time, what you're going to do is introduce a slight bias for higher numbers. If you're always rounding up on that off chance that you hit 0.5, there's going to be a slight bias in the data. Now, if you're working with millions of numbers or doing lots and lots of calculations using these numbers, this is going to produce a very skewed result. So what Python does, instead of always rounding up, it rounds to the nearest even number. So you'll see that the nearest even number to 11.5 is 12. The nearest even number to 12.5 is 12. And likewise with these two. So that's what round does. Now you've seen round before, but normally there would be a, a second parameter after the comma. But if you include the second parameter, even if it's zero, it's always going to have a decimal place after it. So that's why we leave it as just the one parameter. Beautiful! All right, on to the next two methods. Now these next two methods require that you import the math library. It's math like American, not maths. There is only one math. Now, the first one we're going to look at is math.floor. Now, take a guess at what this does. If I run it, and you'll see. Now, initially, it looks like it does the same as just int, where it chops off the 0.5 after the 11 and the 12, 11 and 12. But look at the negative 6.5, it becomes negative 7, and negative 7.5 becomes negative 8. So what floor does, as the name implies, it drops it down to the nearest whole number, and if it's a negative number, that becomes more negative. Hopefully that makes sense. And the final one is seal, as in sealing. And this does the opposite. It rounds it up to a nearer positive number. There we are. So 11.5 becomes 12. And negative 7.5 becomes negative 7 because that's closer to positive. So these are the four methods of converting a floating point number to an integer. We've got int, we've got round, we've got floor, and we've got seal. Now, as I said, I've never seen the SQA ask you to convert a floating point number to an integer other than rounding a number to a specified number of decimal places, which is slightly different. But hopefully if you are ever to come across this, you now know four ways of converting a floating point number to an integer, regardless of how you do it. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll catch you in the next one.